Shalom, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. Now, today, I wanted to go into Revelation, the third chapter, and read through the 12th verse because these are scriptures that are used by IUIC to teach the children of Israel that once we are delivered then we will receive the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son okay we will get a new name alright now uh, we're gonna go into uh, that doctrine we're gonna listen to uh, this madness here and then we'll go into the doctrine but there's two things that we need to establish real quick uh, let's get the book of uh, Exodus as we always get three and uh, 15 okay it says and God said moreover unto Moses okay this is the most high speaking unto Moses via his word thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel Yahweh okay that's that name there the God of your fathers the God of uh, Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you this is my name forever okay and this is my memorial unto all generations this is my name forever okay right there he said it this is my name forever also let's get the book of hebrews 13 and i believe it's the eighth verse okay now we know his name is not jesus christ okay and one of the main reasons we know is not jesus christ is because that's a greek transliteration it's not even a pure translation really the word jesus is it's a base it does it, it really is not a word okay however the J we know was not into ex in, in existence at this time and we know that the Messiah himself said his name in the Hebrew tongue so this couldn't be the name so Yahweh the same yesterday and today and forever let's read that again Yahweh Hamashiach the same yesterday and today and forever all right in the name that was given unto Mary, okay, to, to, to name Yahweh Shai was given directly from the angel Gabriel, okay, because the language of the heavens is Hebrew, okay, and that's a language that would never be destroyed, okay, uh, in these names, though they have been, all right, for a long time without fruit, were never destroyed. Okay, and that's what's happening. The, the the truth, as it is spoken in the book of Second Edras. Give me one second here. The book of Second Edras, the uh, real quick. Second Edras, the uh, sixth chapter in the twenty seven verse, it says, "For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched." Okay, and what's the deceit? The 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 wicked philosophies of this world. Okay, and what are some of the, the, the deceptions that are in the earth? The blaspheming of the name of the Heavenly Father. Let's get that real quick. Okay, Revelation 13. And 6, speaking of Esau, Edom, this beast system, it says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. Now, with the name, there's an actual name. But then there's an image and characteristics that come with your name, okay? So he blasphemed not only the name, but the, the true image of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has been blasphemed. And his tabernacle, which are the Israelites, and them that dwell in heaven, which are the angels. Okay, these things have been openly blasphemed on a high level here in Babylon the Great, man. Okay? And the Heavenly Father has ordained in these latter days for the truth which has been so long without fruit to be declared man okay and that's what's happening so his name was never taken out of the earth it's just that through deceit okay through deceit they've been without fruit so for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith it shall flourish corruption shall be overcome okay and corruption is uh, the Esau's rulership man it's all based on corruption 
and it's being overcome. The pseudoscience, the lies, everything that he's put out there is all being overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And that's what's happening on the earth, man. And all of these people are hurt. And this guy right here, okay, is trying to save face. And we're going to listen to him. And then we're going to get into the book of Revelation, the third chapter, the scripture that he uses here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and listen to Bishop Nathaniel himself. Because, um, you know, and this is not done out of hate. And I dare any of you come onto the comment board and tell us we're hateful. Because when you listen to this guy right here, he's talking cash, money, S-H-I-T, man. The whole time. Name calling. And this guy wants blood, man. And we'll show you. Let's listen. He wants us to be locked away. Okay, if he had it his way, the the troops will come and we we would we disappear, man. Let's listen to this foolishness, man. I don't think you do. So let's go on. Now that I done did that and went over that dumb stupid stuff right there. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. How can I omit this? Now the name Yahweh, the name Yahweh Shah. Watch this. Here's another scripture that they reject, Revelation 3.12. Not all of them. I was talking about the BBHI, the bum black Hebrew Israelite. All of these things, but what does the scripture say about the afflicted and poor people? What would they do? Let's get the book of uh, Zephaniah 3. Okay? Zephaniah 3 and 12 says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people Okay, yeah, yeah, you can call us bums, but you're a spiritual bum. Okay, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant, so the remnant is going to trust in the name of the Lord, man. Okay, and, and, and starting with the, the teachers, they're going to teach that. So that the remnant, those who hear the message, can know and understand what they should be doing. And how their power differs and is separate from all of the lies out here, man. As the scriptures say in Isaiah... All right, though other lords have dominion over us, all of these other gods in the flesh, they rule this world, but only by thee will we make mention of thy name. So the afflicted and poor people shall trust in the name of the Lord. And what does the scripture say about the poor? Proverbs 17 and 5, whoso mocketh the poor, because that's their thing with us, we're a bunch of poor, bum, dirty degenerates right whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker and he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished man okay so you're, you're mocking the poor but the poor okay who are rich in faith are those who are heirs to the kingdom of heaven man i just wanted to bring that out and we'll go back to these different scriptures that i have uh but let's listen uh more to the bishop black bum hebrew israelites man like like why are you saying that that right there lets me know that this guy wants us to be locked the hell away, man. Okay, we, we, we ourselves say that no Israelite group should be calling themselves black. We're not black. Even in the defense of the other camps, when they try to say black, we say they're not black Hebrew Israelites. But this guy right here has no integrity. You see, but you don't see nobody on this comment board saying you're, you're being mean to GMS. You know, uh, this is hateful. Nah, but when we do these videos, we're the hateful ones for trying to edify and go into these points, man. And you're going to need a name to call on very soon because things are about to get crazy as hell out in this world, man. Now, if you are a demon and you're calling on those names, don't think you're going to be delivered either, man. Okay, there's a particular energy you should be in putting on the elect. Okay. Revelation 3.12 Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Are you in the temple of the Lord now? No. Okay, let's read it again. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar. Are we not the temple of the Lord? But let's keep going. And we're going to get understanding on that scripture. For those uh, brothers and sisters who may not know how to break it down. A pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, meaning you won't go out into captivity. Are you in captivity today? Yes, he is. Uh, 
he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. Hmm. So once you're we're in the kingdom, in the temple of the Lord, it says, and I will write upon him the name of my God. But the BBHI, the black, bum, bum black Hebrew Israelites said, they already got the name. So they don't need the Lord to do that for them either. Uh, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Watch this. This is the Lord speaking. And I will write upon him my new name. So Christ said he will write upon him his name. He's going to have a new name. But you know what? The BBHI, the black, bum black Hebrew Israel, said, they already got the name. That this, this has already been fulfilled. Do you, you don't get no more dumber than a BBHI. Listen, just ignore the vast majority of them. I'm saying you're going to have to ignore them. And this reason he's saying that is because a lot of his, um, a lot of uh, his uh, members are asking questions as pertaining to the name and things of this sort. Now, let's go to the book of Revelation, the third chapter, and we're going to get some understanding on this. So we're going to start here at the 11th verse. Okay, and let's make this red letter because this is the Messiah speaking. Okay. Revelation chapter 3 and 11, it says, Behold, I come quickly, hold, all right, that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple. As we know, the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter says what? And they overcame him by the blood of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach and by the word of their testimony. Okay? This is 1 John 5 and 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And how are you born of God? If you were chosen from the foundation of the earth to get the victory, man. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, man. Even our faith, man. So our faith, the faith of the elect, okay, which the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah at the forefront of that new song, the name of the Most High is written in their foreheads, the 144,000. That word that they would be speaking, their testimony is what's going to overcome this devil and it's already written in them. It just has to play out on the earth, man. This is 1 John 2 and 14. I have written unto you fathers because the true church fathers under Yahweh Shai are the 144,000, man. Okay? Because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because we will receive these words in the latter days as young men. Okay? Because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you. See that? The word of God abideth in you, speaking unto the elect. And ye have overcome the wicked one. So the wicked one has already been overcome. Okay, it just has to play itself out on the earth, man. Okay? So the victory is already written in the elect. We just have to do our jobs on earth, be tried as fire, go through Jacob's trouble, and whatever else the Heavenly Father has ordained for us to endure so that he can work that mighty work and deliver us as it is written, man. Okay? So... Going back here to Revelation 3 and 12, it says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar, okay, in the temple of my God, man. Okay, and we know the tabernacle of the Heavenly Father is with men, and he shall go no more out, okay? And I will write upon him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, okay? Now, this is speaking of the fulfilled marriage between the Most High God through Yahweh Shai and his elect. Okay? As you read in, um, let's get that in Revelation, the 21st chapter. Because what happens when you fulfill a marriage, okay? The woman is then called by your name, okay? This is Revelation 21 and 2. Because what happened to the nation of Israel? The Lord took his name off of us, man. You see that? And I, John, saw the holy city, which is the elect, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay? And when your husband, all right, uh, uh, lays with you, okay, what happens? His name is put on you. 
So let's go into a few precepts to get understanding on this, okay? Because we were called by the name of the Heavenly Father, man. But what happened is he divorced us and took his name off of us, man. That's how we became Gentiles, okay? This is a, a quick one, Isaiah 63 and 19. We are thine, thou never bears rule over them, meaning a the heathen, they were not called by thy name, man. Okay? <laughs> So the Lord put his name on us. So Daniel 9 and 19, O Lord, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, and hearken, and do defer not for thine own sake, O my God. So we were called by his name. But what happened, man? We were divorced. All right, he divorced us, man. Okay, this is Hosea 1 and 9. Then said God, call his name, lo, I me. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Okay, and the precept is Jeremiah 15 and 1. Then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me as mediators for the nation of Israel, right? Yet my mind could not be towards this people, cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth, man. So we're basically a woman forsaken, man. Let's get that in the book. All right, of uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, okay, and we can start at, we'll start at 1 and then jump down, man. Jeremiah 3 and 1, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again unto me, saith Yahweh. Okay, going back to eight, it says, and I saw when thou, it says, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away. So what happens when you're put away as a wife? The name of your husband is taken off of you, man. Okay, and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not but went playing the harlot also so the lord divorced the whole nation all 12 tribes man he put them away okay and we were not called by his name man all right but as it says here okay in this verse when we were not called as people verse 10 says yet shall the number of the children of israel be as the sand of the sea which could not be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto them yeah not and that starts here with us receiving the comforter which is the holy spirit man so that we can call upon those names we'll get that in just a minute but going back here to revelation 3 and 12 it says to him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god man and the building of the temple starts with us receiving this word man from on high okay and he shall go out no more and i will write upon him the name of my god okay because his name will be placed back on us man and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, okay? New Jerusalem is still going to be Jerusalem, but it's going to be New Jerusalem, okay? Refreshed, and that's what we're going to look up, this word new, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So Nate is saying once we overcome and once all of this happens, we're going to get a new name. Well, let's look up this word new. Because it's easy to get over on Israel when you read these things in English. The Christian church does that. Okay? But we have to go into these words and get understanding on this. Because clearly the Most High told Moses to tell us that this is my name forever. So what does that mean, new name written upon us? The word for new is kainos. It says new as respects form, recently made, fresh recent unprecedented novel uncommon unheard of man okay just like when you get revelation 21 and 1 it says and i saw a new heaven that same word kainos is here a new heaven and a new earth okay so is the whole earth going to be destroyed and replaced with the new one no the earth is going to be refreshed it's going to be made new why? Because it's going to be ran in righteousness, man. Okay? It's the blessing of Jacob. Okay? The, the, the blessing of Esau 
was the old earth the earth in a defiled state but the earth in its righteous state will be known as a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away okay and there was no more sea okay and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem okay new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven we're going to be refreshed okay the way that the world is going to see us is going to be something that has never been seen before man okay we're going to be on a whole nother level man coming down from god out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband man okay and his name will be placed back upon us because we will then be entered into a new covenant okay the first covenant was broken remember he said i was a husband unto them let's get that I believe that's jeremiah 31 and it's also in hebrews uh yep jeremiah 31 and 31 behold the days come saith the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah not according to the covenant that i made with their fathers that i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt which my covenant they break although i was a husband unto them saith the lord so the new covenant when we will be returned unto our husband is when he writes the laws in our inward part and you can read that right there okay let me see what this says <laughs> yep uh, hosea 2 and 7 and she shall follow after her lovers but she shall not overtake them and she shall seek them but shall not find them then shall she say i will go and return to my first husband for then it was better with me than now and that's what the elect are ultimately doing we're returning okay to our husband man but once that new covenant is complete his name will be placed back upon us man okay because right now we're a woman forsaken we're a woman in travail and what does a woman in travail do she calls okay upon her protector you see that so it's not that it's going to be a whole new jerusalem it's just that we're going to be refreshed we're still israel okay which jerusalem is a name that was put on israel city of peace we're called the holy city we're going to be made new the way we're going to look the way we're going to be ruling it's going to be unheard of unprecedented okay so as it says here unprecedented uncommon basically that's just speaking of the lord being back at one with his people man okay it's not that the name that he gave moses will change he's just gonna write his name upon us man because we're called by the name of the heavenly father we're his bride we're his possession we belong to him isaiah 40 through 5 and 3 and i will give the treasures of darkness in hidden riches and secret places that thou mayest know that i yahweh have called thee by name i am the god of jacob of israel for jacob my servant and israel mine elect i have called thee all right even called thee by name i have surnamed thee meaning basically he put his name on you though thou has not known me okay though thou has not known me man so now we're living in a time where we're being brought back to our father man before we're entered into that second covenant that's what this grace period was for man okay and we're as a woman in travail man and it was the legacy of the israelites whenever they would be in a dire crazy situation they would call on the name of the lord man okay this is what david said second samuel 22 and 7 in my distress I called upon Yahweh. I cried to my God. He did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. That's happening right now with the nation of Israel, man. Okay? This is Isaiah 62 and 4. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. See, we were forsaken. Neither shall thy land, all right, be any more termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah, and thy land Beulah, 
for Yahweh delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be merry. Let's look up this name, Hepzibah. Okay. Hapatazaya Da. I mean, or Ba, Salakia. Ha Pa Taza Ya Ba. Okay. My delight is in her. That's what that means. So the Lord is going to have delight in his woman again. Okay. In that day. Okay. And it all starts right here with us calling on his name because we were forsaken. Okay. Real quick. Let's go back. Let's go to the word now for Beulah. Because it said, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be uh, any more termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hepzibah in thy land Beulah. Let's look up that word. Ba, by, by Allah. All right? Or by Yaul. Okay? To marry, to rule over, to possess, to own, to marry, to be lord over, husband. And you can look up the, the uses of that word, and it's always dealing with a husband or to be married. And what happens when you go into marriage? Your name is put on your wife. This is why if you take the mark of the beast, the name of the beast will be put on you. Because you're going to enter into a covenant in marriage, okay, with that particular God, man, which is Esau Edom, man. Man, uh, this is Isaiah 54 and 1. Sing, O barren, thou that is not uh, bare, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the less desolate than the children of the married wife, saith Yahweh, man. Okay? Isaiah 54 and 5. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Redeemer of the Holy One of Israel. The God of the earth shall he be called, man. So let's go back to what we uh, had, man. Okay. Let's read this again. So thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be any more termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hepzibah. Okay. He's going to have the light in us in thy land, Beulah, man. I Meaning he's going to be married back to us, man. For Yahweh delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man married a virgin, okay, that's why the elect are going to, to, to be a uh, bride prepared for her husband. He's not coming back for a whore. He's coming back for an unblemished, all right, virgin, man. Which the only way that can happen is if we're cleansed, man, and if we were chosen from the foundation of the earth, okay, to be, okay, perfect when he returned, man. To be justified, right? That's the elect. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as a bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee, man. You see that? <laughs> I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silence and give him no rest until he established because the prophecies will be fulfilled, man. And we'll be back at one with our power, man. Okay? Right here. <laughs> Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, man. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Because the tabernacle represent where the most high God would dwell, man. And he's going to dwell, okay, instead of a physical temple, this time he's going to dwell in the spiritual temple, which is the body, starting with the elect men, the 144,000, okay? And I will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, man. And all Israel will be righteous, man, under that order. And God shall wipe away the tears, all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no, uh, neither sorrow nor crying neither shall they be any more in pain 
for the former things are passed away, man. So we're going to be refreshed. It's going to be a new earth, a new Jerusalem. Okay? But it's still, we're still going to be called Jerusalem. It's just going to be upgraded, man. Okay? The new covenant will be fulfilled, man. Okay? So even going back to Isaiah 62... Let's read down here real quick. Uh, verse 11. Behold, Yahweh that proclaimed unto the end of the world. Okay, have proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion. Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him in his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. Okay, and ironically, this is speaking of when that's fulfilled in the same name, Yahweh okay is in that you know it's not a new name it's still yahweh man and thou shall be called uh uh salt out a city not forsaken man and ironically it's the same name yahweh here the same name that was called upon in genesis okay all right um it's the same name that was given to moses the same name that will be called on in the kingdom of heaven man Go to any prophecy speaking of the kingdom of heaven and you'll see that it still says Yahweh. Why? Because that is his name forever. Why would the Most High need a new name? <laughs> it already exists. He is. He is to be. He is everlasting. You see? That makes no sense, man. So something's up with this guy, Nathaniel, man. Hosea 2 and 16. And it shall be... At that day saith Yahweh, same name, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall not call me no more Bali. Alright, now this word for Ishi, which is Ayash, is basically a man, husband. You see that? Husband. Husband. So we're gonna call the Lord our husband, because why those laws will be written in us, man. Okay, and as a whole, all the nation of Israel from that point forward, okay, will be in a in a in an agreement in marriage with the heavenly Father, man. Once the two thirds are all wiped out, the rebels purged out. Okay, we will be a perfected bride, man, and He will dwell in us forever. He will no longer, okay, there will be no more uh, uh, um, sin for the nation of Israel, man. You see, when he divorced us, it was because of sin. Sin causes death. Sin caused the divorce. But once he dwells in us forever, which is his intent, we won't sin anymore, man. Okay? And now shall not call me anymore Bali, which is basically all of these different gods and things that our people have followed, man. We're going to be brought back to our husband through Yahawashai, who's the mediator of that second covenant, man. For I will take away the names of Balim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name, man. Okay, because we're, we're, we're to destroy the names Jesus Christ. Now, real quick, in the book of Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter, and all of these different gods, it ain't just Jesus, it's, it's various different gods. Okay, those gods have some very, very uh, uh, detrimental vibrations within them that have been very detrimental to our people, man. Now, ironically, IUIC did a burn the white Jesus challenge based upon this scripture, Deuteronomy 12 and 2, ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye have possessed, okay, serve their gods, okay, upon the high mountains that are on the hills and upon every green tree, and ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. So remember the burn a white Jesus challenge? See if we can get that real quick. I'm not going to click on any of the videos, but if you remember, they had the burn, the white Jesus challenge where particular of their members would do videos burning images of white Jesus. You see that? Let's go back here. Deuteronomy 12 and 3 and burn their groves with fire and ye shall hew down the images of their graven 
images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. So you don't just burn white Jesus, which we're doing this spiritually. The scriptures say this word is fire, okay, and this people be the wood, man. So we're burning these doctrines down with uh, uh, ultimately this word, okay? But one of the things we're, we're also burning is the names of those different gods, man. Okay, they're not supposed to be heard out of, out of our lips. We're not supposed to burn incense into those gods and call up on those names for salvation. There is a particular name that was given to the nation of Israel to call on, man. Even going back to Adam, there was given a particular name that was associated with that chosen people, and it's traced and documented in the records of our book. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord, okay, at the time of Enos and Seth, his father, okay, the name Shem, which was Noah's son, means name, and what did he say? Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, meaning that name, okay, was placed upon that chosen line, and that's who they would call on, man. Abraham. Okay, Abraham, okay, when his name was Abram, in his uncircumcised state, Genesis 13 and 4, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first, and there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. This is the legacy of this particular line. When they would be in distress, we would call upon the name of the Lord, man, Okay. Psalms 91 and 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Okay, all of these damn heathen, especially Esau, Edom. Okay, and they're going to come with their armies and their, their plan, but they're going to be trampled on, man. Because he have set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. And it's even deeper than just knowing the name Yahweh, knowing his characteristics, being obedient to his way. Okay? Persevering. Okay, even when it makes you look crazy. Not denouncing him. Not being ashamed of him. Making yourself a fool for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh's sake, man. Because they're teaching that we're saying, if you just call on a name, you're saying, no, that's not true. Because you got to have demons calling upon that name man you have demons look at isubk they call upon the name of yahweh and yahweh shai right but look at their actions man they don't really truly know the name they're just saying it they don't know because with the name when you look at this word name to shum you see shum man shim that's where the and when they say anti-shemitic this is what they're talking about, man. The chosen people came through this line. But it goes into name, reputation, man. Fame, glory. And if you truly understood the reputation of the Most High God, you fear him, man. Okay? You fear him, man. It's going back here. Where were we? Let's see here memorial hey he said this is my name forever and my memorial unto all generations man so we're gonna roll with what the lord said we ought to obey god rather than men see nate is trying to establish a doctrine and squirmish because he's being questioned and he's on the wall he's on the ropes okay i will set him on high because he have known my name he shall call upon me and i will answer now how would you feel if your wife who you who you did all of these things to and hope she learned her lesson okay called upon another man at the time of her distress come on man i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation man <laughs> oh man jeremiah 4 and 31 for i have heard a voice as of a woman in travail what is he hearing? He's hearing his name being called on, man. And the anguish of her that bringeth forth, her, as the anguish of her that bringeth forth her first child, man. Because we're going to call on the Lord to deliver us from these devils, man. It's going to be crazy. The voice of the daughter of Zion that bewailed herself and spreadeth her hands, saying, Woe is me, for my soul is weary because of murderers, man. 
So we're a woman in travail because we've been forsaken. Okay? And now we understand that we're betrothed, okay, to the most high God. Okay? Right? Through Yahawashai. So as this foreign object is, 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 is this demon is coming with his chip and all of these different things to do to us, we are crying out just like the woman in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, but we're calling on a particular power to hear us, man. The truth is very particular, man. You can't just come and set up your own agenda, man. So going back here, now it makes sense, man. Revelation 3 and 12, man. To him that overcometh, which the elect were already chosen to overcome, we just have to undergo what we have to undergo here on earth, man. But whoever they are, wherever they are, we do know that they will be teaching the name of the Lord, because Revelation the fourteenth chapter says the name of the Father is written in their foreheads as they sung that new song. Okay? The new song. To him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, man. And that's going to be the governing body. He shall go no more out. Because why? The law, statutes, and commandments will be written in him, man. Okay? And I will write upon him the name of my God, man. Because we will be back at one, okay, in covenant with our power, man. In the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Which is Jerusalem means city of peace or the teachings of peace because the law will go forth from jerusalem man once we are perfected in the laws written in us we're going to establish order on the earth which cometh down from heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name man and that just means refreshed man so we're going to be in, in a perfected state it's still the same name yahweh okay it's just that we were we were separated from our power, man. Okay? But in this new covenant, okay, he's going to do something for us that the first covenant didn't do, man. And he's going to write the laws in our inward parts, man. Okay? So, let's see here. There's, there's another... Uh, scripture that they brought out that they always bring out lord willing we'll get into that later but i just wanted to go into that you know um it's very tedious but you know this book is very very highly spiritual and the scriptures say that the elect would praise the name okay of yahweh bahashem yahweh shai man so i don't know what's up with this guy man you're stupid dumber than an ox in an ass <laughs> This guy is something else, man. And this dude got demons on him, man. This nigga is mean as hell. All right? Y'all say we, we, we're the unreasonable ones, but listen to this guy. So the elect, at the end of the day, going back to this point I made here, the elect are going to be implanted with the word of the Heavenly Father, all right, and provide it with the tools necessary, okay, to teach, okay, and prophesy the destruction and to teach those who have ears to hear to hear, man, the word and be converted. Okay, the elect will be blessed with those tools, man. As it says here in 1 John 2 and 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. And how do you know him that is from the beginning if you don't know his name? And that name, Yahawashai, was given unto him from the beginning. Okay? It's just that the angel told Mary to name him that when he was born, when he fulfilled, when, when the prophecy was fulfilled of him to come. He told her to name him Yahawashai, man. These things were all ordained from the beginning, man. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. You see that? The word of God abideth in the elect, and that's how ye have overcome the wicked one okay because when you get revelation the 14th chapter it clearly tells you that the 144,000 have the father's name written in their foreheads man the word is in them so they will be equipped with the tools necessary to go out and preach okay what does it say um take heed to the doctrine 
Is that First Timothy's uh First Timothy in First Timothy four and sixteen, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So there is a doctrine that's going to lead to salvation, man. And it's known as the new song, which would be uh, uh, sung by these 144,000, man. But the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shire at the forefront, all right, of that song. So hopefully y'all were edified. Till next time, Shalom.